We're back now with South Carolina Republican Senator Lindsey Graham. Uh, good to have you Thank here you. in good person, morning. Senator. You just voted for a short-term deal that doesn't include a cent yeah. for Ukraine yeah. nor for the U.S. border. Right. How did you swallow that? We had to keep the government open. We got 45 days to fix both problems. Uh, I, I listened to Kevin closely. Uh, there will come out of the Senate soon a bill that will have three legs to it. Disaster funding, we need more, not less. Uh, robust funding for Ukraine to get them through the next fighting season, not 24 billion, and a major effort to secure our border. I believe there's bipartisan support in the Senate to do both and it will go to the House hopefully in the next 30 days. What the speaker was talking about though was a bill, HR2, regarding the border that Senate Democrats will never get on board. There will so be what a are you talking about? Right, so we gotta fix asylum. We need border security agent increases. We need more detention beds. I think there's democratic support for major border security reform, but we have to attach it to Ukraine. To those who say we need to fix our border, you're right. To those who say we need to help Ukraine, you're right. To those who say we need to do the border, not Ukraine, you're wrong. The vast majority of Senate Republicans would support a combination of border security, Ukraine funding, and disaster aid. Mm -hmm. Well, when it comes to the House yeah. <laughs> and the, the idea that we got to move swiftly, right? right? The White House told Republican leadership that they don't have enough funding for Ukraine to make it through 45 days, and the authorities they have are insufficient. Yeah. Well, so how much time are you talking about needing? You know, I've been around a while. I'm wearing a pen. Do you think I would leave Ukraine? Hang I don't believe that one bit. This same White House says we don't need F-16s, we don't need high Mars, we don't need tanks. I've lost confidence in their evaluation of what's going on in Ukraine. We've got a bunch of allies. They can help for six weeks. The allies have spent more money in Ukraine than we have, and when you hear otherwise, it's just not true. It's been good burden sharing, but I'm not worried about the next six weeks. I'm worried about next year. We will produce in the United States Senate Ukraine funding 60 or 70 billion, not 24, to get them through next year. We will have a border security measure that is strong and we will have additional disaster aid because the nation needs it. We're gonna do those three things and I'm hoping our House colleagues will react positively to it. I think Kevin is the right guy at the right time. The only way he loses his job is if a handful of Republicans join up with the Democratic Party to fire him. That would be a disaster for They're the future out. of the Republican Party. That's not going to happen. Kevin has the overwhelming confidence of his membership. He worked to avoid a shutdown. Mm -hmm. He will help Ukraine, but he's telling everybody in the country, including yeah. me, you better send something over for the border for me to help Ukraine, and he's right to make that demand. Understand, but you're, look, you're talking about, to be clear, a supplemental bigger than $24 billion for Ukraine, and that's a gonna lot pass bigger. in 45 days. Oh, absolutely. You know okay. why? Because we need it. We haven't I, lost one soldier in the Ukraine. We yeah. spent less than 5% of our military budget, 50% of the Russian army has been destroyed by the Ukrainians. They would be at Crimea already if, it, if the administration hadn't been so slow right. in giving weapons. Well, and, and we dedicate a lot of time to Ukraine on this program, um, okay. so we find it important. But I want to ask you, because uh, Leader McConnell had gone into the lunch yesterday telling Senate <clears throat> leaders that he believed the White House when they said they were running out of funding for Ukraine, and then his deputies apparently urged him to drop it, which is how you ended up with this bill with nothing in it for well, Ukraine. He, he, is he in control of the caucus? Uh, of Senator the McConnell's been great in Ukraine, but he picked a formula to lose votes for Ukraine. To expect people like me and others to vote for Ukraine aid without border security is unreasonable. Mitch made a miscalculation. He's been great on Ukraine. I told him a thousand times, the key to Ukraine funding is to deal with a broken border. 107,000 Americans have died from fentanyl poisoning, mm -hmm. from fentanyl coming across the southern border. We haven't lost one soldier in Ukraine. So uh, America is being invaded from a broken southern border. To my Democratic colleagues, you need to take border security seriously. Yeah. Are you saying that Ukraine should not be a standalone? It has to be. It directly. will not be a standalone. When I go to South Carolina, I openly talk about helping Ukraine. If you let what? Putin get away with this, you have a bigger war. Well, what about our border? I promised people in South Carolina, I'm gonna do two things. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna help secure our border and keep the fight going in Ukraine 
to make sure that Putin doesn't get away with this. Have you asked uh, Donald Trump, your friend, to come out and publicly support more aid to Ukraine and to push some of these skeptical members of the Republican conference? I'll leave it up to him to what to do, but he wanted to get out of Afghanistan. Well, Vladimir Putin has been praising him for yeah, his well, comments about Russia and Ukraine. about President Trump. He did not pull the plug on Afghanistan, even though he wanted to. The biggest mistake we made since the war on terror is withdrawing from Afghanistan. To President Trump and anybody else, if we pull the plug on Ukraine, that's 10 times worse than Afghanistan. There goes Taiwan. To stop funding Ukraine is a death sentence for Taiwan. Putin will keep going. You missed all of World War II, if you don't know how this uh, movie ends. To the Republicans who say Ukraine doesn't matter to us, you're wrong. Respectfully, you're wrong. The war gets bigger, not smaller. There goes Taiwan. If Ukraine can beat Russia, China's less likely to invade Taiwan, and Putin gets stopped. I need to take a break here, but we have more to I'll talk about back. with you, Senator. Um, <laughs> you will. Uh, Senator Graham's going to stay with us, and we're going to talk about the legacy as well of Senator Dianne Feinstein on the other side of that break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Face the Nation. We turn now to the life and the legacy <clears throat> of California Senator Dianne Feinstein, who died late last week. Women are seen as spear throwers of change. It, it, we're not the same thing repeating itself. Then Senate candidate Dianne Feinstein first appeared on Face the Nation in 1992. Ms. Feinstein uh, is, uh, is gender a plus or a minus for you? There's so many men back there and we don't see anything happening. The Californian was a pioneer, winning her seat in the year of the woman. The Senate went from two female lawmakers to six. Feinstein said it was the first time she felt her gender wasn't a negative for voters. When she was elected to the San Francisco Board of Supervisors in 1969, there weren't many women in public office. Feinstein became the first female mayor of the city following the assassination of two of her colleagues. Both Mayor Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk have been shot and killed. She never forgot that experience and championed gun laws, including the 1994 assault weapons ban when she reached the Senate. I am quite familiar with firearms. I became mayor as a product of assassination. I'm aware of that. I found my assassinated colleague and put a finger through a bullet hole. Though it expired 10 years later, her passionate campaign continued. Let me talk about rights for a minute. Does a child have a right to be safe in school? Does a law client, when it goes, he goes into a law firm, have a right to believe he's safe? Does a shopper in a mall have a right to believe that she's safe? I think so. That position put her at odds with conservatives. But she became a deal-making centrist, an increasingly rare breed in Washington, and at times challenged her own party. This is not what Americans do. As the first woman to head the powerful Intelligence Committee, she sparred with the CIA director and accused the agency of trying to cover up its past abuse of terror suspects. We're supposed to be better than that, that we don't have to torture people. America, she argued, is big enough to admit when it is wrong and should be confident enough to learn from its mistakes. Being a pioneer wasn't easy, as she told Bob Schieffer in 2009. We women have had to fight for everything we've gotten in the public arena. We weren't given the right to vote. We had to fight for it. Today, women make up a quarter of the Senate, following a path she helped to forge. Senator Graham uh, was one of the Republicans, as you saw there in that piece, who worked with Senator Feinstein actually quite closely yeah. on the Judiciary Committee. Loved her. She was great. When I first got to the Senate, somebody told me, I'll protect their, their name here, if you want to get anything done, see if you can get Ted Kennedy and or Dianne Feinstein to help you. Because if they got on your bill or your idea, the people in the Democratic caucus would listen. If Ted was the lion, she was the lioness. She could move votes. She knew how to get to yes on controversial things. She was always kind. She was always prepared. She was a defense hawk. Uh, she was socially liberal. She was my friend. I miss her. And if you're looking for a role model in politics as a young man or woman, look to her life. 
You know, there is also that image of her embracing you after yeah. a very contentious hearing, yeah. Supreme Court Justice uh, yeah. Amy Coney Barrett, and she was criticized from within yeah. her own party for yeah. praising how you conducted yourself. Uh, how do you think about that now? Well, that says more about the current state of affairs than Diane. Diane was saying nice things. Um, we had a, like a five second hug and because she wanted to say something nice about me, they thought she had to be off the committee. That's what's wrong with po Diane wasn't the problem, she was the solution. And there are people on my side, it, it goes both ways. So let, let's just do this. Let's reflect on a well-lived life. America's better for Diane Feinstein having served our country. California's better for it. And we lost a lot. We just mm -hmm. didn't lose a person, we lost an idea. And I want to re, my contribution is to try to re, reinvigorate the idea. It's okay to be tough and kind. It's okay to be liberal or conservative, but it's even more okay to work for America. And that's what she did. We've lost a lot with Diane. So the rest of us, we're going to have to up our game. Before I let you go, I want to quickly ask you, she was also an outspoken proponent of abortion access, right? She was. Are you going to reintroduce your bill, limiting it to 15 weeks of access, which has kind of become a litmus test for a lot yeah. of these presidential candidates? Yeah, Donald I will. Trump has not signed on. He said he, he didn't like 15 <clears throat> weeks. My bill has exceptions for rape, incest, life of the mother. 47 or 50 European nations, of uh, 50 European nations limit abortion from 12 to 15 weeks. 15 weeks the baby can suck its thumb and feel pain. I will introduce that bill. I want America to be like the civilized world, not China or North Korea. It's a debate worthy of a great country to have this debate, mm -hmm. and we will have it. Senator Graham, thank you for your thank time. You.